In this video, we are going to look at the best lenses for sports videography and their cheaper alternatives so that you can decide which lenses are the best ones for you. Hey, what's going on? My name is Peter Sorellis. I'm a videographer and editor from Toronto, Canada. I specialize in sports videography and we're going to be doing a lens breakdown of a whole bunch of different lenses in every focal range that you need to consider when filming sports videography. We're going to talk about the best lens, in my opinion, in every focal range. And then we're going to talk about some cheaper alternatives for Sony mirrorless cameras so that you can decide which lenses you want to keep in your kit. Now, before we get started, I should note that cheaper lenses typically have pitfalls like the ones listed on screen here. And I haven't done detailed research into every single lens on this list, although I have gotten my hands on quite a few of them. So if there's a lens on this list that seems interesting to you and that you might wanna buy, I recommend doing some more detailed research into people who have done very specific tests on that lens before making a purchase decision. With that in mind, the first focal range that we're gonna talk about is 24 to 70, that mid-range type of zoom. This is such a key lens to keep in your kit because it's awesome for like gimbal work and pre-game stuff. You can get some really cool cinematic shots for pretty much any sport using a 24 to 70. Also for sports where the field of play isn't very big, like basketball, for example, you can actually use something in that like 24 to 70 zoom range as a lens to film game action. And it gives you the option to punch in and get tighter shots and frame a subject up to fill the full frame while also zooming out and getting wider shots that show more of the atmosphere or help you capture a subject when they get really close to you. With that in mind, the best 24 to 70 millimeter type of lens for Sony mirrorless cameras is the Sony 24 to 70 millimeter F 2.8. It's a sharp lens. It's got custom function buttons. It's pretty much just like perfect for Sony mirrorless. It's made by Sony. So the autofocus performance is excellent but it is $1,700, which is quite pricey. And I understand you don't necessarily want to drop that much money on a 24 to 70, considering if you're gonna be filming sports, there's other focal ranges to consider like 70 to 200 or even longer potentially, which can be pretty expensive as well. So here are some cheaper alternatives. The Sigma 24 to 70 millimeter F 2.8 art lens is 1100 US dollars and has comparable quality to the Sony. They also have the Sigma 28 to 70 F 2.8 Contemporary, which isn't quite as pristine as Sigma's art line, but does come in a few hundred dollars cheaper at only $800 and is still sufficient and can get you the shots that you need. There's also the Sony 28 to 70 F 3.5 to 5.6, which comes in at $400. So it does have a variable aperture, which isn't necessarily something that's desirable when filming sports because you don't want the exposure on your image to change as you're zooming in or out. And it never gets quite as fast as F 2.8. But if you just want something that's versatile and doesn't break the bank, then that lens could be good for you considering its price point. And then finally, we have the 24 to 70 type of range lens that I use on a regular basis and that I'm actually using right now to film this video which is the Tamron 28 to 75 millimeter F 2.8. I have the second version of this lens that has a custom function button. I think the autofocus performance is awesome with my Sony mirrorless camera. I actually don't notice any worse autofocus performance than what I get with my regular Sony lenses, which is amazing. I think it's sufficiently sharp. There's no like weird warping or anything. It's just a lens that I'm really happy with. There's also an earlier version of this lens, which I used to have that you can get for even cheaper, but this lens comes in at only $900. So it's not that bad, especially when considering that compared to that Sony lens, which is almost twice as much money, the quality is pretty similar. Now the next focal range that we have to cover is 70 to 200. And this is such a key focal range for sports videography because you can use a 70 to 200 on full frame cameras or on crop sensor cameras to film pretty much any sport. I've used this lens to film in pretty much every sporting environment that I've ever been in. It's a must have in my bag no matter where I go. So having a really good 70 to 200 millimeter lens is really important. And the best 70 to 200 millimeter lens for Sony mirrorless is the Sony 70 to 200 millimeter F 2.8 Mark II. It is sharp, it is big, and it comes in at a whopping 3,500 US dollars, which in my opinion, 
isn't really justified for video. I think that for photography, that f2.8 aperture goes a lot further than it does for video. For video, I don't think it's necessarily necessary. There's also on the cheaper end, if you still want that f2.8 though, the Sony 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 Mark I, which is not quite as updated as the Mark II, but it does have that f2.8 aperture for you, even though the size is still there and it comes in at only $2,000 US. I say only, even though that's not really that cheap. Now the 70 to 200 millimeter lens that I use is the Sony 70 to 200 millimeter f4. And this lens comes in at only 1500 US dollars compared to the previous two, which is pretty affordable, all things considered. It is lighter, which makes it more versatile and easier to carry around. Of course, you don't get an f2.8 aperture, which is the big drawback, but I find that I don't need it as much when I'm shooting video because I don't need it to get extra light. I can crank my ISO, my shutter speed isn't as fast as if I were to be shooting photo. And I can get that blurry background look when I'm zoomed in at 200 millimeter. I don't necessarily need to open my aperture up anymore. But if 1500 bucks is too much for you and that doesn't even sound like a good option, then there are some cheaper offerings from Tamron. Now on the cheaper end, we have the Tamron 70 to 180 f 2.8. And this lens has pretty comparable quality to the Sony 70 to 200 millimeter f4, but has an f 2.8 aperture, which is really desirable. The big downside to this lens, which costs only 1100 US dollars, is that there's no stabilization in the lens. And I don't think this is a really big deal when you're filming with wide angle lenses, like a 24 to 70 or wider. But when you're zoomed in at 180 millimeters, you're gonna want all the stabilization you can get, especially if you wanna shoot handheld and have a running gun portable type of setup. So not having that stabilization in the lens is a really big drawback for me. And it really is the reason why I decided to go with the Sony 70 to 200 millimeter F4 instead. Now on the cheaper side, we also have the Tamron 28 to 200 F 2.8 to 5.6, which comes in at $729. And like we mentioned before, it does have that undesirable variable aperture, but it's only $729 compared to the other lenses on this list, which were as much as $3,500, and it gives you a wider zoom range. So there's a lot to consider there, depending on your needs. Tamron also offers the 70 to 300 at 4.5 to 5.6, and the 18 to 300 at 3.5 to 5.6 coming in at $700 each. And although I can't speak for the quality of the cheaper three Tamron lenses that I just mentioned because I haven't actually gotten to use them before, they do offer a wide zoom range for a cheap price. And I know that some of the Tamron lenses that I've used in the past, including this one, are of good quality. So I'm not saying go and get these right away instead of your Sony zoom lenses, but they're definitely worth considering, especially if you're new to the market. So the last focal range that I wanna talk about is kind of that super telephoto range, which is anything that touches like 400 millimeters or beyond. And these lenses are awesome for sports where the field of play is really big like football or soccer, so that you can get extreme close-up shots in environments where you otherwise wouldn't be able to if you didn't have these lenses. And the best lens out for Sony mirrorless cameras for this, in my opinion right now, specifically, for video and not over $10,000 is the Sony 100 to 400 millimeter F 4.5 to 5.6. This lens comes in at $2,500, but I rent it for like 50 bucks Canadian per day every time I want it from the camera shop that's near me. And I find that this is like a good way to go about it when I need this lens so that I can use it for the times that I want it, but I don't need to pay that large price tag. Now, another lens that you can consider, and it's not out yet, but it's available for pre-order, and I will be making a video about it on this channel once it comes out because I'm really excited to see how it compares to that Sony lens, is the Tamron 50 to 400 millimeter F 4.5 to 6.3. It's $1,300, which is about how off the price of the comparable Sony lens. And if it's anything similar to what this Tamron 28 to 75 millimeter lens is to its Sony comparable for the wider zoom ranges, then I think that it could be a real contender for best lens in this category. Again, it's not out yet, but I'm really excited to get my hands on it. And I think it's gonna be something that I use in my kit a lot when I'm able to actually go and purchase it. Sigma also has a lens in this category, the Sigma 100 to 400 millimeter F5 to 6.3. This is $850 and I've actually used this lens before. I thought it was all right, but it certainly isn't passable when you're shooting at night. I found the F5 is just too dark which is really unfortunate because it's at a good price point and I was pretty happy with the picture quality, although it wasn't quite as good as the Sony. I did end up actually returning this lens because it just wasn't working for me, but depending on the environments that you're shooting in and the camera that you're using 
and what type of quality you're looking for could actually be a good lens to consider. Another good offering from Sony in this category, which gives you even more reach is the Sony 200 to 600 millimeter F 5.6 to 6.3. This lens is an absolute beast for only $1,800. I've used this to shoot soccer and the amount of reach you can get on it is absolutely insane. I loved using it. Obviously you can't zoom out. So if a player runs at you, you're in a bit of a tough spot, but to be a hundred yards away from someone and punch in on like a medium shot or even a close up, if you're gonna go into crop sensor mode, for example, is like pretty nuts. It gives you a lot of versatility as a sports creator and lets you mix up the types of shots you get a lot. So it's worth considering. And since it is a Sony lens with a Sony camera, the image looks pretty good. There are also a couple cheaper offerings from Tamron in this focal range that have variable apertures as we've discussed before. There is the Tamron 150 to 500 F5 to 6.7 for 1300 US dollars. There's also the Sony 70 to 350 F4.5 to 6.3 for $1,000. So these give you that kind of larger zoom range, not necessarily up to 400, but 350 isn't bad by any stretch of the imagination and it gets you almost all the way there in case you needed something that can get a little bit tighter than your 70 to 200. Maybe you're filming soccer and you need to be able to film the other side of the pitch in case there's a goal down there. These lenses can get it done for you for a little bit cheaper. And if you're filming on like a bright sunny day and you can stop the lens down, who knows, then maybe it makes sense for you. Something worth considering. Now I know that was a lot of information, so I'm gonna link all of those lenses in the description below. If you do end up picking any of them up and you wanna go use my links, I'd really appreciate that because they're affiliate links, which means that at no additional cost to you, I get a kickback from the company you purchase from, whether it's Amazon or B&H or whatever because I referred you there. So it's a great way to support the channel at no additional cost. And I would personally really appreciate it. If you liked this video, please make sure to subscribe to the channel because I post videography tips and tutorial videos similar to this one on a regular basis. And I'd love to have you around for that. If you have any questions about anything that we talked about today, just drop it down in the comment section. I would love to have a discussion with you down there and help you out as much as I possibly can. Anyways, that is going to be all for this video. So until next time, peace.